We have got an 11-game main slate for tonight in Daily Fantasy Baseball, and typically when there are that many games, you're going to have a lot of pitchers who have big upside because it's 22 guys, hand, or odds are, a couple of them will be guys with massive strikeout upside. We do have at least one guy for tonight who has that, but in general, I think it's going to be a lower-scoring pitching slate than usual for such a big offering. So we're going to break down what that means for our lineups, which guys I think could have that upside, uh, a value play who I like a lot for tonight, and get you ready for Tuesday night over on FanDuel.com. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a digital media managing editor for FanDuel Research here to break down Tuesday night's 11-game main slate with locks up for 7.05 p.m. Eastern, for tonight. Just one weather note on this slate. That is that there is a slight chance of rain in Boston for the Red Sox and Royals. They should be good to go, but if you want to check back on that one later to be safe, you can. But overall, I think we should be able to play things pretty straight up for tonight. We'll dive into what that means, playing straight up uh, in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. We have a PGA podcast for this week's event coming up later on today, the FedEx St. Jude Championship uh, via myself and Brandon Gadula, a no-cut event in the FedEx Cup playoffs. You can find that right here on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. You can also find the solo shot over on FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. Have you ever started a player in your fantasy lineup who scores three points while someone on your bench puts up 20? Well, with FanDuel's NFL best ball drafts, you don't have to worry about that. Draft your team, and each week, the highest scoring lineup from your roster will be used as you battle for first place all season long. Leagues can be free to play or for money and range from three to 12 players. The NFL season will be here before you know it, so head over to FanDuel today and get in on the action. Eligibility restrictions apply. Pitching preview for this Tuesday main slate. Robert Valdez checks in with the highest salary on FanDuel. His salary is ten thousand eight hundred dollars. Followed by Max Scherzer at ten five. Tanner Bybee's ninety seven with Logan Gilbert at ninety five. We got Yusei Kikuchi t- taking on the Guardians at ninety two with Brady Singer against the Red Sox at nine thousand. Then Mitch Keller, Jamison Tyone, Julio Urias, Wade Miley, and Lucas Giolito are the others at eight thousand dollars or higher. Now we do get Max Scherzer tonight. He is facing the A's in Oakland, so. I know I mentioned how it's a low upside slate. It is a low upside slate outside of Max Scherzer. He is the one traditional stud we turn to on a large slate. He will be our top guy for tonight. Scherzer looked really good in his first start with the Rangers. He let up three runs, but nine strikeouts in that game. And that tied the most strikeouts he's had in a game since June 7th. His swing strike rate was 19%, which is his highest since June 1st, and his second highest mark this year. And, you know, he let up runs, but it's not like Scherzer got hit hard because he let up just three hard hit balls on 15 balls in play with no barrels allowed. So says to me that Scherzer probably just got a bit unlucky. For the full season, he has a 28% strikeout rate. He's facing a lineup with an 88 WRC plus against righties. Their ISO is 147. And as always, it is easily the coolest park on the slate with the Giants playing on the road for tonight. So I find nothing to pick here. I have Scherzer projected for 7.2 strikeouts tonight. Nobody else for me is above 6.2. So Scherzer is a great option. And I think he's kind of the one guy who fits the traditional stud mold for this kind of slate. As mentioned, though, I do like a value play quite a bit for tonight. And that value play is actually going to be my number two option behind Max Scherzer. And that guy is Cutter Crawford. Crawford's salary is $7,900, taking on the Royals, and I like him enough to put him number two behind Scherzer for tonight. Crawford, as mentioned, home against the Royals. They're not as much of a high strikeout team as they were earlier on this year, but they still don't draw any walks. Their walk rate is below 6% against righties in the active roster, criminally low. And they also have an 87 WRC plus against righties, which means it's a pretty good matchup for Crawford. And Crawford is trending up. His name is Cutter, so fittingly, he's throwing more cutters over his past six starts. Makes sense. He has a 26% strikeout rate in that span. You would think a guy with this name would be good with that pitch, and it turns out Crawford does fit the bill. And that's even with that 26% strikeout rate comes with four of those six starts coming on the road. He is at home tonight. He had nine in one game earlier on in this stretch. He had seven in another, and the results have been really good, too. The one big downside with Crawford is pitch count because he has just one quality start in the six game sample. He has not topped 90 pitches in any of those. Now he did hit 93 and 94 earlier on this year, including one right before the stretch began. So it's not like he's incapable of going a bit deeper in games, 
and I think that that is enough on this slate where there's not a lot of upside. It means the opportunity cost of spending down on Crawford versus other studs is not that large. So I like Crawford quite a bit. I, I think that he's a good pitcher who's trending up in a good matchup, and that's enough for me to be on Cutter Crawford tonight at $7,900 as my number two option behind Max Scherzer on FanDuel. Because Crawford is our value play, I can go anywhere for this next option, and I'm going to go to Yusei Kikuchi at $9,200. Part of this does depend on uh, the status of Jose Ramirez. He's appealing his three-game suspension. If that appeal is denied today, Ramirez will sit. Now, I'll downgrade this Guardians lineup a lot. If the appeal is still pending, Ramirez will play, and that would downgrade Kikuchi a bit. But even if we assume Ramirez plays, the Guardians' active roster has just a 67 WRC plus against lefties. Their ISO is 112. They are almost as bad as the Rockies against lefties, which is tough. Tough look for the Guardians there. Obviously, they're a low strikeout team, but that would change a bit if Ramirez can't go because he never strikes out. And that's the one area where Kikuchi has always been really good. The strikeouts have been there. It's been the hard contact, been the bad results. But I think that Kikuchi is trending up in those key areas where he's lagged before. Over his past 12 starts, he has a 3.80 skill interactive ERA in that time throwing fewer changeups. His hard hit rate allows about average at 38% with a 38% fly ball rate. Average for Kikuchi is a good thing because he has typically been hideous in those departments. So he's pairing that with a 27% strikeout rate, and that's all great. Now, those are the peripherals for Kikuchi, and those are one thing. Results are another. Typically, we've seen Kikuchi have much better peripherals than results, but now he actually has a 2.95 ERA in this span. I don't think that number will stay that low, but... Kikuchi is much better now than he was before, and it is a low strikeout matchup. That does matter quite a bit, but again, we don't need a ton of upside to hang on this lane. We could go with a guy who gets you seven innings, five strikeouts, very efficient, no earned runs allowed. That could be enough for tonight, especially with Kikuchi's salary being very reasonable at 92. So I still like Kikuchi a lot despite the low strikeout matchup. I'm going to rank in third behind Scherzer and Crawford. So to me, it's Scherzer one is the one true stud. Crawford, the top value play and number two option. And Kikuchi, number three overall for tonight. Part of the reason why I think you could justify further going with Crawford is that the Dodgers are very in play for stacking. And I would love to be on them for tonight. They're facing Brandon Fott. And the roof is closed in Arizona tonight, which does downgrade the park factor. But I still think we want to go here. Now, the caveat is... I did bet the Arizona money line for this game in part because I think that Fod is getting better. I do not think he is better enough. We have to avoid him in this matchup, though. And he is getting better. He is coming off his best start of the year. He went seven innings, allowed one earned run with one or with seven strikeouts, and that came against the Giants, who are pretty solid offense, and that game was on the road. So that's a very good start for Fod. Very encouraging. That's part of why I'm on their money line for today. The problem has been the batted ball data for Fod. Uh, it's been his big bugaboo so far in the majors. His hard hit rate so far is 45%. It was 44% against the Giants. He let up three barrels in that game, but he let up just two hits. So the Giants were making quality contact, but the hits just did not fall. That tells me that the old issues, the biggest issues for Fox, have not been fully cleared up. I think the strikeouts will trend up, but I'm skeptical he's corrected the batted ball issues. Fox's ERA in the majors is 7.11. His expected ERA is 5.35. He's better than that. Um, I think that he's much better than that. But I don't think we need to avoid stacking against him when the opponent is good, and that's the case with the Dodgers. So I think we need to be in on them here. The Dodgers are a team to me. I think grades out very well for stacking. The Dodgers lineup is kind of the one thing that's annoying here, though, because they have a lot of guys right now after the trade deadline. They kind of stocked up, primarily against lefties more so than righties, but it's allowing them to sit their studs more often, even against righties. That will eventually drive down salaries for the big guns, but it also means you got to hang out and wait until their lineup is posted to fill out and finalize your lineup. So it's a minor thing, but it is potentially the one downside to stacking them if you're going to be busy closer to lock. So keep that in mind with your lineups. Uh, the Dodgers lineup may not be out. You want to make sure you have a window to check their lineup. Make sure you're good to go as we get closer to lock. Number two stack is going to be the Cubs facing Carlos Carrasco. And he's like been a guy I've liked for a very long time. He used to be a really good pitcher, and I hope he gets back there. But he's not there right now, and it's kind of a bummer. But I do think we should stack the Cubs against him tonight. Carrasco, pretty rough rut right now. He's led a five-plus earned runs in three consecutive starts. 
He led up four in one of those uh, before that. So four plus in four straight games, five plus in three straight, and three of those four were easy matchups. Over his past seven starts, Carrasco has been throwing fewer four-seamers. It's never been a great pitch for him, so that's not a bad thing. He's throwing more sliders instead, but it clearly has not worked because he's letting up a 54% hard hit rate in that time. Carrasco is keeping the ball on the ground, but that's kind of the lone positive right now. He's facing the Cubs tonight. Their WRC plus against righties is back up to 116 with a 176 ISO. So it's definitely not the best park for home runs with this game being in New York, but I still think we have to go here given Carrasco's recent struggles. It does help us that Carrasco is a guy who can get hit by both righties and lefties. So the Cubs used to be very righty heavy, but now have a lot more lefties in the lineup. And it doesn't really matter, honestly, because Carrasco has been letting up a lot of hard contact righties. So I think you bump up a guy like Dansby Swanson, who has hit the ball really, really well since coming back. I think you can bump him up because of the platoon splits, but definitely don't worry about the lefties because they've been fine against Carrasco as well. Our final stack is going to be the Brewers. They're facing Kyle Freeland, starting for the Rockies. It's his third start off the IL, and he led up three home runs last time out. Now, it was a Coors Field, which is worth noting, but it's also a continuation of the issues that Freeland has had all year long. So I like stacking the Brewers against him here. Freeland's velocity is up since so coming off the IL, and it's actually up quite a bit on a sinker and slider. So that's definitely good, but it hasn't mattered because in those two starts, Freeland has led up 40 balls in play. Seven have been barreled, so that's 17.5%. And the hard hit rate allowed is 50%. So even with increased velocity, Freeland is getting hammered. If we look at uh, the nine starts Freeland has made with his sink or slider usage back up, he's allowed a 46% hard hit rate. His ERA in that time is 5.69. Part of that is at Coors Field, obviously. But he led up four and seven earned runs on the road earlier on this year in this sample as well. The Brewers have added enough pieces where I have more faith in them against lefties now than I did before. So the Brewers, to me, the number three stack here for tonight uh, behind the Dodgers and the Cubs. Now, because it's a lefty here in Kyle Freeland, I'd expect Tyron Taylor to bat in the middle part of the order for the Brewers. But he's a pretty classic guy who makes you nervous for DFS. He did start last night against the righty, so that's somewhat encouraging. But outside of that game, he has started two games against the lefty since the All-Star break. And he has just two plate appearances in both those games before being subbed out. He did a home run in one of those, so he paid off, but there is not a lot of room for a huge game there. Even two home runs is good. You'll take that every day, but I kind of want more. A little greedy, for sure, but I don't want just two plate appearances out of my guys. So I like Taylor's talent enough. I think that if he were to be a full-time player, I'd be on him in DFS. He does hit home runs, but I need to see him stay in games longer before I feel great about using him in DFS. So it's a bummer to skip over a guy with a low salary, batting fifth in the order for this Brewers team, but... That is my preference for tonight. I can't guarantee I can do that because if I want to get to Scherzer, I got to stay somewhere. But my preference is to avoid Tyrone Taylor if I can and find my value elsewhere. Things to watch for this Tuesday slate. I don't mind the Pirates tonight for stacking. They're facing Yanni Chirinos, who struggle with the race and hasn't looked a whole lot better in two starts of the Braves. He is doing a better job at suppressing hard contact, which is what he did previously. But it could be a small sample. I think the Pirates lose to consideration for stacking. And they're a team I'm willing to go to beyond those top three for tonight. I think the Angels could be interesting too. They're facing what will likely be Alex Wood as a bulk reliever for the Giants. And there's a reason Wood is not a full starter anymore and he has not pitched in a while. He was really struggling before this, this shifted role for him. The Angels have a 113 at WRC plus against lefties in their current active roster. So I could see them trying to get back in that win column here pretty soon. And I think the, the Angels do make a lot of sense tonight. Finally, the Mariners are facing Nick Martinez. I don't think Martinez will be out there very long. He just pitched in relief a couple days ago. So it's basically a bullpen game with Martinez throwing around, I'd say, 50 or so pitches. And Martinez has been better recently, better hard contact numbers, better uh, fly ball numbers. So the Mariners are fine for stacking because Martinez was rough earlier on. But that's why I'd rank them below my top three and below Angels and Pirates as well when it comes to stacks for tonight. So the Mariners, an option, just not one I'm enthused about personally. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls on this Dinger Tuesday over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The boring one, Max Muncy taking on a righty here, fought again, letting up a ton of hard contact and a ton of fly balls still. And Max Muncy is a guy who can punish those kinds of things. So Max Muncy, salary and FanDuel, $3,600, the boring home run call for today. 
For the fun one, let's go with William Contreras. I think that he is the better quote unquote value play on the Spurs team. I know that Taylor's a lot lower at 23 than Contreras is at, at uh, 3,000, but still does get you wiggle room. Contreras has been hitting for some more power recently, a lot of doubles in his profile. And facing a lefty who is letting up hard contact, I think that's enough to make Contreras a really fun option. So home run calls for Dinger Tuesday, Max Muncy and William Contreras. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. Want to give a big thank you to all of you as always for tuning in. As mentioned, we are back later on today talking about PGA DFS for the FedEx St. Jude Classic. Find that in your podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. We'll talk to you all once again tomorrow. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.